My study. Yes, and, yes your study. <laughs> skip IRR or skipper? It's skipper. This is slightly different than the trials and the presentations that we usually see at WCLC24. Uh, We're trying to prevent infusion-related reactions with amivantamab. Amivantamab is an important drug. We, we're still setting what exactly its role will be, how much it's gonna be used in first line with lazertinib in patients with EGFR mutation, which is an indication that is already approved in the US. We do not have an indication here for chemo plus amivantamab after ozimertinib, and that's something that is already approved in Brazil and in Europe. And that should come in the next couple months as well. And of course, we use it with chemo in patients with exon 20 insertion mutations. And up to 70% of patients have infusion rated reactions. And this can be quite troublesome. This can be quite scary for patients in particular. And it is something that is very unusual for any drug that I know that it usually happens only in the first time you infuse the drug. And what we tried to do here is we did a Simon two-stage design to look into four different prophylactic strategies. We looked at DEXA at four and eight milligrams. We looked at Montelukast and we looked at uh, methotrexate. And you had to have fewer than three adverse reactions to go on to stage two and fewer than eight to go to stage, um, uh, uh, to the expansion stage. And only the eight milligrams twice daily dexamethasone starting two days before and still giving one extra dose before the IV dexamethasone that's usually in the label. Uh, that was the only arm and we got 40 patients in that and the infusion reaction rate went down from about 70% historically to 22.5. So it is clearly an important difference. And this is something that we can do as early as with the next patient we prescribe having vent them at four. So it is um, probably not going to be a standard for too long because we're expecting subcutaneous amivantamab to be approved before the end of the year. And with the subcutaneous, we see a lot less of these IRRs or infusion or, and, and the subcutaneous is not going to be a quick injection. It's going to be a five minute infusion. So it's still kind of an infusion, even though it is subcutaneous. And that has a lot fewer uh, IRRs related to it. We what we really need to work on is the rash. Rash is one of the main uh, reasons I get second opinions for patients on amivantamab with exon 20 or with um, uh, sensitizing EGFR mutations. And this is something that we're still working on. There's a number of different strategies um, that we are testing to see if we can improve on the rash as well. Roberto, thank you so much for going over that. You know, whenever I'm looking about emivantamab or thinking about this drug, it reminds me of what we use in the community, daratumumab for myeloma. Very similar paradigm, infusion reactions, and we're starting to see that same approach here. So exactly to what you said, starting yeah. our next patients with emivantamab, we should be using prophylactic dexamethasone at least till we get the subcutaneous formulation available to decrease some of these infusion-related yeah, events.